Hey everybody, welcome back to Backcountry Amateur Radio. Let's do some antenna. Okay, so there it is. It's uh, about 13 feet up and uh, <laughs> maybe less. It's not super high, but I spent a little bit of time tuning it. I originally made the overall length at uh, 20, or sorry, 33 and a half feet uh, each leg. So it, what about 67 feet, right? And so I ended up cutting off Just over um, two feet per end and because the idea is to have this 40 meter antenna close to the ground um, that's kind of why I ended up trimming so much um, but at any rate it tunes into uh, the center at 1.2 to 1 SWR at, at uh, 7.17 megahertz which is fantastic and going down the frequency to 7 0.1 megahertz which is digital stuff is still no higher than 1.4 to 1 and at 7.3 the the upper edge of the operating band for amateur radio operators is uh, 1.5 to 1 which is exactly perfect <laughs> um, very happy with how this little thing turned out all right so I hooked up my nano VNA to my dipole set up how I would set it up in the field uh, and I went out to a soccer field where there's plenty of room and plenty of space to avoid other people. So as I'm tuning and working with the antenna, I wasn't like getting a whole bunch of craziness going on. At any rate, never mind the chart where it says SWR on the left here. Um, those numbers aren't representative of where the graph falls and that's a mistake, but I just didn't want to go back and redo each one of these slides. So as you see the dip there, that's about 1.2 to 1 SWR on each of these frequency centers. So as I trim, the frequency goes up and I finally land at 7.18 megahertz and 1.2 to 1 SWR. Now I would have loved to show you the uh, nano VNA screen, but it just doesn't capture well in the field. So I just made these at home and uh, on, on Photoshop or whatever, and it works. It shows you exactly what I was seeing, but a little bit more cleaned up. So that is antenna tuning in a nutshell. Just be aware as you're tuning a wire antenna, a dipole or N-fed, um, that if you need to cover a big gap in frequency, it's okay to trim a little bit more generously, but bring it back in, reel it in as you're trimming as you get closer to the frequency you want this to be resonant on. So uh, cutting wire is, is pretty easy and it's easy to overdo it. So keep it in mind if you're ever tuning your antenna that if your SWR, your, one to, your lowest SWR is well below where you need to be on the frequency spectrum, then you need to cut that wire to bring it up. And uh, if it's resonant above where you need it, say eight megahertz versus seven megahertz, your wire is not long enough, or maybe it's too high off the ground. And you know, there's all these variables that come into play. So I definitely recommend you research and learn about antennas before you start building and messing with your own. So. Um, anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Here's the configuration. Uh, I've got each leg about, you know, roughly four feet off the ground, but that height is ideal. And ideally, I'm going to set this a little lower and see how it does for Envis. But um, it's probably with that height, it's probably Envis anyway. So uh, I'm going to play around with it now. Get on the air. Here's a, a station I found for frequency. Noise floor isn't too bad out here. Watch this.
trying to figure out how to get this thing to work, but I, I think I got a solution with your help. 7.255.00. If you hit this. If you find the memories on this thing to get it to keep it in place, I'd be happy. I never used the memories on it, but... Like it. Oh, to leave the DNR on for a second. That's my little experiment. I put that together. Just, I mean, you saw how quickly you did it. It's really not much longer than that in the garage. Uh, some of the things I didn't show, like counting out the feet of the 26AWG silicone coated wire that I use, uh, but the rest of it you got to see. And so it, it, uh, it was pretty basic. And I built the winder out of just a piece of uh, random material that had, I think it came out of the bottom of a duffel bag, so it's kind of thicker, harder plastic but it does exactly what I need it to. All right, there she is up in the air, a uh, little zoomed in, not really much of a photo. And here's a little bit of a close up on the antenna. What you see is what you get, nothing crazy hidden on the other side. I took it out three days later for a soda activation just to see how well it performed. Obviously only having access to 40 meters uh, could be a disadvantage, but the signal reports largely came in four or five in uh, audio quality. So that's fantastic. I'm really happy with that. Uh, it ranged across the spectrum a little bit for uh, signal strength, but it went all over the place, all over the West. I was talking to people. So I was really happy with the results from that initial soda test. So I want to show you the station for the antenna configuration. I've got my ski pole upside down, fully extended in the snow up to my, my funny little homemade winder thingy and then sloping back down to another ski pole over there that you can see right there. So um, yeah, anyway, RG8X uh, feeding down to my 891 and that is the um, Eberly stock H31 Bandit backpack, which works so well for these quick activations where you don't have to haul a lot of gear. A couple of radios, GMRS, and uh, the 2 meter HT that I'll use for everything. That has um, been a great little radio. I use that for APRS as well with a mobile link to TNC. Did bring up the GMRS radio to see if I could talk to the wife, but I uh, might run out of time. Um, she's busy with the kid, so. There is my wonderful view. Um, hope you guys are all having a good morning. I, uh, I love this stuff. This is about an hour hike up here. Got a little, little lost sidetracked with some, uh, some weirdness. But uh, the summits on the air to me is just like, it's just nice as it really motivates me to get out and hit the trail, park at the top, and just talk to people for once in a while <laughs> on the air. And being that my home station, um, I get really, really bad signal in there with a lot of uh, interference from houses and power lines and just doesn't work so well. So getting out uh, for a on the air is about the only time I get on the air. So anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed this little clip. I'm going to head out of here, pack up and head out. Uh, these a dipoles do take a little bit more effort to take down than your um, end fed half waves. So I'm going to get to work. Joining me, I uh, really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and share this video with some friends. Give me a thumbs up if you will. And uh, we'll catch you down the trail. Take care.